Hey everybody, today I'm animating one of my favorite things, fall. Let's watch the animation and then we'll talk about how I use guide layers and Dragon Frame software to make it happen. So this animation was short and sweet, but in my opinion, what makes it look sharp from an animation perspective is that opening shot of the acorn swirling into place and making that perfect circle. So to make that happen, there's actually a lot going on here. Before I did any animating, I actually placed all the acorns in their final resting place to make sure the motion culminated to that satisfying circle. Early on, I remember when I was learning animation, I would have an idea in my head for what I wanted the animation to look like, but I never did any of the prep work to make sure I executed that idea as well as I could. That phrase comes to mind, fixing the plane while flying. I think a lot of animators find themselves in that position. We're trying to hit a mark, make sure it has a certain feel, not too slow, not too fast. There's a hundred variables that you're likely having to keep in mind. And Dragon Frame Software has a ton of tools that can really aid you during that animation process. For example, guide layers. So guide layers are a really helpful tool in Dragon Frame software that allow you to basically stack different types of media, whether it's uh, something you've drawn by hand using the tools on the software, uh, pictures or video, uh, and we're gonna take a look at them. So I have the project file open for the fall video that we just watched, and let's take a look at it. So you can see I'm in the XGView view, and uh, let's look at the guide layer. So right off the bat, you can see there's three different types of guide layers. There's composition guides, drawing layers, and media layers. So we're not going to talk a lot about media layers because I already spent an entire other video um, dedicated to talking about how I use live action reference footage uh, in Dragon Frame software to assist in my animation. That video is called Animating Duel of the Dyad. I'll put a link in the description. It'll also be like a card at the end of the video. So composition guides. Composition guides are available in the guide layers. They're also available in the floating tool palette right here. Uh, so you can access, access them there or you can access them directly in the guide layers. Um, to turn anything on, you're just gonna go and click here. Pretty simple. Uh, and whatever you have highlighted, in the bottom right, there's gonna be this like settings menu that's gonna allow you to hone in on uh, different aspects of whatever you have highlighted. So that's composition guides, very helpful. Uh, we're not gonna get too much into these though. What I wanna look at today are my drawing guides. You can see I already have one of the drawing guides on, so let's turn these off. Let's play that opening scene from this animation. So hold on, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it. And right now I'm, I'm playing with where the, what will loop. All right, so I have it on loop right here. Uh, you can see I have it starting at frame one and it's gonna repeat to frame 70. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let it play. And you can see right here that there's this motion that's really satisfying and appealing, at least it is to me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there and just go ahead and check out what one of my drawing layers uh, have been. So you can see I drew the path that the acorns will um, move across. And I did that because I wanted it to be really smooth and consistent and I wanted each acorn to follow that same path. Before I animated any of this, I had actually placed where I want each of the acorns. So if I pause it kind of towards the end here, uh oh, let's, let's let it extend a little bit past that. Um, you can see all the acorns line up pretty well with where these drawn guide layers are. So forget these blue marks, those are increment editors. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Basically, these things are gonna allow you to help time the uh, ease in and out and the slow and quick animation style that you're using. I'm gonna get into that in a later video, so let's just focus on uh, the drawing layers. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it extend out a little bit further, and then I'm gonna show you this other motion is gonna be the leaf coming in. Kind of see it here in a second. So there you go. So drawing your animations can make things feel a lot more consistent and a lot more um, weighted. There's also times whenever it'll help you with just some logistical things. Let's, if I fast forward through to this last section, and you can see I've drawn on here with this guide layer, F-A-L-L. -L. So 
And when I was animating this, I knew that I wanted there to be some action, some movement, some jitteriness, uh, but I didn't want them to go all over the place. So this was just, I just knew that if I make sure that the leaves stay, each letter stays on top of the letter that I drew, it'll be good enough and it also won't be too jarring. Um, you can see right here is that you can actually add text in Mason, why would you want to add text to one of your animations? How is that helpful? Well, it can be helpful in a lot of different ways. If you are working with other stop motion animators and you want to leave them a note on your project, um, that's a good way to do it to make sure that they're going to see it. So you can see right here at the top, if you kind of watch this area right here, um, as these other, as these first initial acorns are starting to take place, they were getting really close to this outside acorn path. Uh, and without that, sometimes I would, I was struggling to know, okay, which one is which, um, which one am I supposed to be moving? Cause for each frame I was moving 12 acorns. And so, uh, you know, just things, just small little things. They don't take a lot of time. So to make a text box, like anything else, you're going to add a drawing layer. And then I'm going to go down here and hit T for text. Uh, place this here and this is just a test so let's say test dot 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 how about we do a please that's not please please subscribe to the channel all right so shameless plug and you can change the size all that jazz um, and then you can move it wherever you want and if you don't want to see it turn it off and on Looking at some of the other tools that you have in the drawing layers, uh, you can click line paths. It's pretty pretty simple. Uh, you can make curves. It's helpful, that's how I made these right here. Um, and what else? I mean, you can do all kinds of things, shapes, and then you can move things around as well. So that's a very cursory glance of the guide layers in Dragon Frame software. If you have any questions or comments about how you use guide layers, I'd love to hear them. Put them in the comments. I try to respond to each and every person who uh, comments on any of the videos. Uh, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.